To provide industry market update, please join me in welcoming to the stage Jeremy Giles of the U.S. Central Region at Prologis. Jeremy is my good friend from Dallas, who I only get to see at national conferences. Uh, he is a busy guy, but we appreciate him being here, and no one is more respected in the Dallas real estate community than Jeremy. So, Jeremy? headshot but <laughs> well, good morning I uh, oops there we go so uh, this morning I'm going to focus on a, a brief focus on supply and demand and uh, this is a group I saw some of you out late last night this is a group that needs some good news and tell you why I think this is the best operating environment we've seen in 30 years. It's really good. This is the point at the presentation where I probably should warn you I have a lot of slides with a lot of words and I like to read them and if you don't have, it might be a good time for a cup of coffee. But in any event, some forward-looking statements in here as you know. Okay, so this slide is a little, we have a lot, a lot going on here. It probably deserves a little, um, little explanation. The gray bars represent major markets in the U.S., and what they show you is, is vacancy rates over the last uh, 10 years, so you see a range, and the dots show you where vacancies are today. So we're, we're in a uh, historically low vacancy environment. It's, uh, it's really a phenomenal time to be operating in our business. And I would argue that there's even some nice room to run in markets like Atlanta or Chicago where we are today. Chicago was later to emerge from the recession and is really, as the Chicago brokers in the room know better than I do, is really humming along, humming along nicely right now. So how did, how did we get there? Well, I would propose to you that we've had a supply-driven recovery predominantly. If you look at, at, at the deliveries uh, of logistics space starting in 2009, we've really had a five-year run of unprecedented low volumes uh, of deliveries. And as a result, uh, even with modest demand, we've had um, vacancies get to, as the previous slide showed, uh, really low levels. Okay, so why is it happening? This is something Dirk and I were, were, we were talking about earlier. Uh, we've had very depressed rents um, from the recession. We've had, uh, it's a very, it's been a very uh, different lending environment. So you've had constrained financing. Uh, there's been a consolidation of development uh, players where some of the smaller ones have washed out through the cycle. So that's much more institutionalized. You have buildings of, in, of, of increased size and complexity. I'll come in on e-commerce in a few minutes, and that's become a very expensive uh, building to develop and own. Uh, and certainly entitlements ha have gotten harder. So there are a lot of things that have led to much, much slower supply, uh, and even as rents uh, are improving, I would argue that supply will still uh, have some checks going forward. So supply and demand has been heavily out of balance these, these, this, through that five-year stretch and, and, and even into today, but uh, it's, it's getting closer to equilibrium and it's, it's added or passed it in some markets, but we believe it really won't hit it nationally until mid to late 2016. So it's a great, great time to be operating. So what, where is the demand coming from? Well, there are certainly many, uh, many factors that you tend to look at. The generic things, we'll look at GDP growth, we'll look at population, job growth, growth in international trade. These are all major factors. But there are also some really interesting structural changes, not the least of which has been the change in how we all consume uh, products. And this is one of my favorite slides that we have. Even, one of the things this shows you is even with modest growth in demand, uh, the change in e-commerce is a huge driver in our type of space. 
So what we have is a, uh, an example of a hypothetical traditional retailer and a hypothetical uh, pure e-commerce player. The, uh, the retailer with a billion dollars in retail sales needs approximately 325,000 square feet of uh, logistic space because obviously so much of the product is on their retail shelves. The e-commerce player needs a million square feet of, uh, of logistics space. So again, modest economic growth, even in spite of that, we're seeing big demand from e-commerce, even in its infancy. So that, that's another reason for optimism. And uh, e-commerce is really in the early innings. If you look at 2005, not that long ago, there was only one uh, retailer with, a, with $5 billion or more of online sales. Today that sits at seven, and that's certainly growing. We see growth not only in, in the large end, in the Amazons and Walmarts of the world, but we're starting to see it with mid-size and smaller companies. And we're also starting to see a diversity of, uh, of size requirements. As, uh, as strategies unfold, one of the things we're seeing, I can tell you anecdotally, it's not just big, bom big bombers by the Amazons of the world. We're starting to see different size requirements. And Amazon and others are doing a lot of infill uh, to be able to perform same day and next day uh, service. So big driver in our business. So what, what does this all mean? We've, we have a great supply picture. We have some in really interesting things happening on demand in, in terms of demand. Uh, in spite of modest growth, we've, we've had some really good absorption in the last few years. But for the last 20 years in our business, one of the things we're all struck with is rents really haven't grown. And adjusted for inflation, they've actually been negative. And uh, this, is, this is where we turn. We haven't talked yet about, about cap rates or about rents. Uh, but ultimately what's happened in a rising cost environment for the last 20 years Developers have been able to maintain their margins because of cap rate compression. And uh, certainly unless you believe cap rates will continue to compress, we believe we're entering a stage of time where rents should follow inflation or potentially better. Uh, because in summary, we've had a, a tremendous supply picture. There are elements to that supply picture that will continue. And we have structural changes in demand that are going to allow for rent growth as we continue to see higher replacement costs. And those replacement costs are, in order for developers to get, mar to get profitable margins, uh, it can't happen unless rents rise in a cap neutral cap rate environment. So thanks for your time this morning.